Wow. Was this fantasy adventure a slog to get through? I normally don't talk about mechanics unless they really impact the immersion. In this case, they really impact the immersion. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You are Geralt of Rivia, a witcher. Confusingly enough, a witcher is a monster hunter that has some unique traits such as immunity to diseases, ability to conserve potions with benefits that would kill a normal person, etc. The game opens with Geralt being rescued after being chased down by some unknown guys. He has no memory of his previous life, but the people who rescued him are friends helpfully enough. But he has little time to recover before the Witcher Citadel is attacked by a group called Salamandra. The group steals Witcher secrets, kills one of the rookies, and injures the good-looking sorceress. With no info to go on, the few remaining Witchers leave their Citadel and scatter to the Four Winds to find this group and get their revenge. I'm going to eschew my usual order to talk about the story first. It's important to talk about the good stuff before I get into the frustrating mess that is the mechanics. Dang it, jumping ahead again. The game is a slow burn. It doesn't really ramp up until the third chapter or about halfway through the game. There is a good deal of puttering around waiting for the story to fire up. In fact, at least two chapters out of six have little to do with the overall actual plot, and in one of those two, Geralt is explicitly killing time until the main quest picks back up. When the main story is humming, things do get interesting. The political intrigue surrounding Salamandra brings Geralt into the kingdom's politics, and Geralt's attempt to remain neutral will be tested. Some of the best moments include trying to navigate situations with little information. The game does give you the option to work for one of the opposing factions. It's a nice touch in that you aren't forced to be neutral. But at the same time, from a story perspective, it seems kind of silly given Geralt's personality and history of the Witchers. On the other hand, it is nice that the choice to remain neutral is a real one and not forced by the narrative. One really weird thing, though, is the intersped cutscenes that feature still pictures. They appear out of nowhere and have Geralt do voiceovers of the narrative. Sometimes they are reflections of past events, but they seem to have no bearing on current happenings. As a result, their presence is really confusing and they appear at really strange times. Speaking of fantasy, let's talk about interactions with attractive female NPCs. Look, I usually don't talk about video game romance and sex because it's usually as shallow as a wet paper napkin. But the level of shallowness of this game requires its own mention as a low point. In one memorable sequence, I gave an elf gal fruit. Fruit. And she hopped into bed with Geralt. For fruit. And to top it off, you get a softcore pornography playing card after the deed. I guess that's the equivalent of putting a notch in the bedpost. Not to mention that these trysts have no impact on any storyline trying to romance either Doc Hotness Sorceress or one disagreement away from psychopathy good elf. Oh, and Geralt is immune to diseases and is sterile, so consequence free sex. Yeah. Fantasy is a very apt descriptor here. In fairness though, the game does have Geralt reflect on the sterility, which is a side effect of being a witcher. And it's a cause of loneliness. So the bouncing from bed to bed like a pinball makes sense in that context. But it's a fig leaf of cover for a ridiculous and shallow view of sexuality. And shallow views also involve anything resembling religious aspects. Religious people are portrayed as superstitious fools, and the only encounters you have with clerics are the ones who are corrupt. This prejudice runs throughout the game, and without a counter, it does little more than grate on the nerves. This next bit features a bit of spoilers, so click the link to skip past if you want. You've been warned. This religious prejudice is particularly galling since it corrupts a likable side character. A knight of the Holy Order is met during the second chapter and has all the chivalrous virtue one could want. Defend the weak, slay evil, etc. And then towards the end he betrays all of this without any justification for the sudden change to the core of his character. It's as if the writers needed all members of the Order corrupted because that's what religion does, don't you know? And forgot that this guy was supposed to make that faction likable. Moving on to the end, the dude pulling the strings is some guy not introduced until the very end. Boo, not playing fair with the audience. Geralt saves the day, yada yada yada. As far as the story itself, it's a middling conspiracy one. It gets the job done and creates interesting situations at times, but overall it's skip-worthy. Okay, I can't take it anymore. Mechanics time. Yeah, I'm putting immersion for last. Bear with me. The combat is clunky at best. For example, combos are initiated by clicking on the target at specific times, which wouldn't be bad except that the game gets confused on who you targeted when enemies are behind Geralt but visible on the screen. Second, the quest tracking is broken. Quest markers will lie to you if you trigger conditions and other quests that advance the story. I spent hours trying to find a guy to turn in a side quest only to have the wiki tell me that he was in an entirely different location because I advanced the main plot a bit. Third, wraiths. Hate these guys. See, they have this stun ability that hits way too often, and no potion or ability seems to counter it effectively. So if you get more than one on you, they take turns stunning you and laughing as they beat you to death. Finally, there's a bug where Geralt just slows down. The normal walking speed is fine, but then this bug kicks in where Geralt just slows to a trudge. And given that there is quite a bit of backtracking in this game, it's maddening when it strikes, which is often. And if it happens in combat and you need to maneuver, you're pretty much dead, especially if they're wraiths. So after all of this, how on earth did this game get a sequel? Well, that's where the immersion comes in. See, there are a lot of good concepts in this game. It's just their execution that's extremely lacking. 
For example, monster hunting in this game is as much preparation as execution. Geralt mixes potions that have beneficial properties. He sharpens his sword with materials for boosts. There is a good but not overbearing amount of preparation before hopping into battle. This is in keeping with the theme of the Witcher as a professional monster hunter and that monster hunting is a process that needs thought. There is also a good amount of balancing needed. Potions have an inherent toxicity that will kill you if you have too many. You'll also want to keep that toxicity in the blood down if you need to heal quickly. Boosts also have side effects on your weapons as well. Keeping things in check and remembering what you will be facing will often help you take them down. Except for wraiths. Hate those guys. So why is the execution bad? Well, normal difficulty will require you to mix potions and use sword boosts, but once you have a favorite loadout you can use that for most of the game. All the extra bombs and coatings are superfluous. Hard mode might make it more of a requirement, but there's no way I'm going to experiment with that. As far as questing goes, there's multiple paths to the same conclusion, which is awesome. One quest involving an investigation into Salamandra's activities can be solved in a number of ways correctly. As typical of me, I stumbled into the solution after I made a wrong turn trying to complete another quest. The problem with this is that doing things out of sequence can really screw up your quest tracker. At one point, it looked like I had to talk to this informant because it said so in the quest tracker, only to find that he wouldn't give me the time of day. Turns out he goes to another location after advancing the main story and that's when you talk to him. Another example of a good idea is acquiring knowledge of herbs and monsters can give you alchemy ingredients for potions. Some of this knowledge is needed to complete quests. It adds a layer of complexity to simple fetch quests and provides more rewards. But given that you will be up to your armpits and ingredients, this seems like a waste of time. Finding out how to acquire this knowledge is also a challenge at times. I just spent money on books. But that would cut into my bottom line for completing quests, and some quests will reward you with books that you probably have already read. So in short, The Witcher is a frustrating mess. Story-wise, its meh political intrigue conspiracy is strangely paced and disjointed at times. The mechanics are functional but frustrating. Even with all its problems, it is just interesting enough to want to complete it, only to find a substandard ending. Ugh, the great circle of frustration is complete. The concepts, though, justify the sequel that came out, and according to all reports, it's fantastic. But for the original Witcher, unless you are a diehard story completionist like me, I'd say skip this one. It's going to take some time before I muster the courage to jump into the Witcher universe again. Whew, that's it. Thanks for hanging with me, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video to the end. If you like more of this, you can click on the subscribe link at the bottom, and as you can see, there are a couple of other videos that you can click on as well. One of them is one of my prior reviews or another content video, and the other one is going to be a playthrough that I'm doing. So feel free to click on either one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks very much.